Welcome to this week's LEGO Technic video. What I'm going to be presenting today is a new design for a two-speed automatic gearbox. Now the advantage of this particular gearbox design is that it's very compact, it's a small size, and at the same time it's a smoothly transitioning gearbox, which means you don't get any of that uh, crunching sound or you don't have a loss of traction on the output. So the idea for this particular gearbox came about from trying to refine some of my previous designs. So a couple of weeks ago I presented this particular compact gearbox. This is also a two-speed automatic gearbox. Um, and it kind of works by the idea of having this lift arm that gets pushed along uh, when there's some torque on the output. And that causes it to change gears. I'll just show you how that one works. So for example if we put some force on the output, it transitions like this and changes gears. Now the issue with this particular gearbox is that it's crunchy in the sense that if you match the output torque to the um, pullback of the elastic band you kind of get this crunching sound as it transitions between the gears. So to improve on this design and not have that problem with the lack of traction on the output or the gear crunching I came up with another design, this one here that I presented a couple of weeks ago. Um, now this one's also a two speed automatic gearbox but it has the advantage that it doesn't suffer from a lack of traction on the output when the gears transition. So let's give you a quick demonstration. So we turn it on like this. Then as we put torque on the output, we can see that the gears change by uh, the force on the differential rotating the rotary catch. And that changes gears. And that's a very smooth transition. We don't lose traction. And we also don't have that gear crunching effect at any point. Now although this gearbox works great, one issue with it is, is just its large size. Uh, it is a lot larger than some of the other gearboxes. So what I was wanting to do is create a design that had this kind of functionality, didn't lose the traction on the output, has a smooth transition, but was more of this kind of size, a lot more smaller and compact. So the way I went about that was to analyse each of the components of this particular gearbox and try to think of ways of implementing the same functionality in a more compact manner. So looking at the four main parts, so at the output, we've got this differential that detects the uh, torque difference between the output and the input on that axle. So as there is torque on this, what will happen is this uh, differential will start to rotate and drive this axle here, which then rotates the second main part, and that's that rotary catch and the selector. Then the selector will add an extra speed to the overall output, and that, first of all, is driven through what is known as the magic differential over here, and what this magic differential does it only allows force to be transmitted in one direction and what I mean by that, I'll just give an example so this is an example of the magic differential, what we've got here is the input and on this side we've got the output and what happens is that you can drive the input and make the output rotate like this but if you try to drive the output and rotate that you find that you can't and you can't in fact drive it in reverse so you can drive it forwards but not backwards, this does not rotate. And the reason this is needed in this particular gearbox design is that um, with this rotary catch here during that transition period you can lose traction and if you haven't got a loss of traction, or if you do have a loss of traction and you pass that through that one directional mechanism, what that means is that there's no backward force that can uh, lose traction on that output. And the final component is this differential here, which does the adding of a constant speed and the speed introduced by the uh, gear changing mechanism. So those are the four main parts, and those are the ones that we're trying to reduce their size with the same functionality. So I started by thinking of other ways of implementing this torque detection mechanism. So we normally use a differential like this, and it allows us to detect the torque between uh, an input axle and an output axle. And I really spent a bit of time thinking about this and looking at the structure of a differential and I realised that it's actually very similar to uh, this kind of setup here. So we can use one of these black kind of components and to create a, uh, I guess, configuration that's very similar to a differential. And in fact, it has the same kind of properties. So as we rotate uh, one of the sides uh, or the input axles, we can kind of create a force on the output like this and, and that kind of allows you to detect that torque difference. So we can rotate like this 
and then as there's a bit of torque on the output the uh, central part rotate and I thought well maybe I can use that to drive some sort of gear changing mechanism but then uh, what I realized as well is that I noticed that this axle here is rotating of course while this one's rotating there and driving the output and I thought well actually that's very similar to this if I replace this particular uh, small bevel gear with a larger one like that uh, what I can then do is potentially have this detecting the torque difference, have this moving and then at the same time this was kind of my big breakthrough is to drive another gear sitting on top so as this moves up it can at the same time detect the torque and at the same time also drive another gear to create another speed so what that means is that then I wouldn't need this differential and the rotary catch to select a different gear. What I can use this is all this in one go and as we detect the torque that will start driving this gear and create an additional speed that can be added to the output to have an overall speed change. So here's a yeah, quick implementation of that idea. So again we've got that uh, differential kind of structure. We've got our input and output and as we rotate the input and put some load on the output we can see that part rotate around and now driving that gear at the top so without any uh, loading on the output it will just work like this and as soon as there's some loading it will lift up and start driving that center gear which can then drive and add on to the output for the gear change so what that means I can now replace this entire part of the gearbox with just this one simple mechanism so this pretty much replaces entirely the torque detection and the uh, gear changing mechanism, the rotary catch and the selector and then after that we need to reduce the size of the other components, the um, magical differential and the adding differential, now the magical differential can also be replaced like I've shown in another video simply by a a worm gear mechanism like this, so again the worm gear has got the same properties, we can rotate the input like that and that will rotate the red output but we can't rotate the red output uh, and turn or drive the input um, so that again is a lot smaller than the differential configuration uh, to achieve the same effect and now finally the adder at the end, uh, that differential I haven't actually found a way of reducing that size um, I don't know of any other way of adding two speeds without using a differential that's, that's had to be kept the same and putting all that together I have managed to create a much smaller more compact automatic gearbox as I've shown in the beginning of the video uh, here it is it's uh, very small it combines all the components that I've talked about so here is that mechanism that uh, detects the torque and then drives a secondary gear that gear then straight away drives the worm gear that only goes in one direction and then the worm gear comes around and gets added to the overall output over here which at the same time is driven through the input to detect uh, the torque change to give us the overall output ok so I'll now give you a demonstration of this gearbox I have connected the motor and I will now turn it on you can see here's the output it's rotating quite quickly we can then put some torque on the output as we apply torque we can see that torque detection arm moving and with enough torque we'll see it will engage the second gear and reduce the overall speed at the output like that and it's again it's uh, a smooth transition there is no point at which we're going to get any gear uh, noise or loss of traction on the output uh, you can see it works very neatly just like that and it's also very strong we could you know completely force it to stop there's no gear skipping uh, it's a very strong and compact gearbox so that is my latest design for a new type of two-speed automatic gearbox hope you liked it uh, please support this channel by subscribing and liking this video thank you for watching we'll see you next time